Sometimes even a massive nerd like me needs to get his adrenaline somehow. You might say, Karara, play some sports, it'll be epic. But sports are for people who have muscles, okay? Like, I literally do not have a single muscle on my body, okay? Like, like what is this? This is not even... Could you even call this a bicep? I mean, yeah, video games work, sure, but they're not nerdy enough. So why not get adrenaline in the nerdiest way possible? Buzzer competitions! For example, this quiz bowl, this science bowl, this history bowl. For me, science bowl makes the most sense because I'm a science kind of guy, you could probably tell. I do a quiz bowl too, but it has like literature and history, so I'm like, bruh. It goes something like this. Literature question, literature question, history question, social science question, economics question, science question. Is the answer neutron? Incorrect. The answer was neuron. What? Okay, you get the idea. I literally had to sleep through all the nonsense, non-science questions until I get to a science question and then I just get it wrong. Oh fine, I don't always get it wrong, okay? I get some of them right, I swear. Science bowl is so much better for me, I can literally answer most of the questions, pretty legit. The main difference between science bowl and quiz bowl is that science bowl is more of a speed kind of thing, so if you're interested in that, do science bowl, and quiz bowl is more of a like, uh, obscure knowledge kind of thing, so if you're interested in that, do that. So first off, why should you do buzzer competitions? Well, in my opinion, they're super fun. Like, literally, they're the most fun thing on my schedule right now. Like, it's actually fun just buzzing in, like, speed kind of thing. I actually like it so much. So if you want to have fun, like, while doing science, and if you're studying for other Olympiads, you should just do science bowl, so it encourages you to do better on other Olympiads. Like, biology Olympiad, I study so much more for that just because I do science bowl. So the question... The one million dollar question is how do you study for the science bowl? Well, the first things first, you gotta have knowledge. Okay, you might be thinking. That's obvious, Karan. Well, no, it's not. Because a lot of people think that if they just do questions all day and all night, they're gonna get better at science bowl, but no. The best way to get better at science bowl is to read textbooks. Okay, thought science bowl was not nerdy enough? No, you gotta read textbooks. That's the actual adrenaline rush. Okay, fine. It's not that fun, but like, Textbooks are going to make science bowl so much more rewarding for you, you're going to be able to answer so many more questions. Like, literally. The reason why textbooks are super good for science bowl in particular is because science bowl doesn't ask for super obscure stuff. Most of the stuff is based on speed, but a lot of the concepts are ba very basic and come in a lot of textbooks. So, here are some recommendations. First, for earth science, there's Tarbuck. For group biology, there's Campbell. For chemistry, there's Zoomdahl. For physics, there's Giankli. If you want to get really good at science bowl, like if you're at that level where you're getting like all the questions and you want to get some of the more obscure ones, then you can read like quantum physics or like anatomy and physiology or other things like that. Organic chemistry is another topic that shows up a bit in science bowl, so if you cover all those topics, then you're like golden, you're like the star science bowl player in the team. So while that's like very good for science bowl, quiz bowl is more of like an associative memory thing. Textbooks will give you a lot of like concepts, but Quizball wants you to associate like more obscure things with other more obscure things. Like, literally, you have to know that this random enzyme called Adam TS2 cuts collagen. Like I literally didn't know that, but once I figured that out, once I associated my brain, I got like two questions on it. So what's really good for this kind of thing is Wikipedia rabbit holes. You basically start on like one random thing, you're like reading about something that you didn't know about, right? You got a question wrong in it, so you're reading about it. And then you click on another link within that because you don't understand the concept within that article and then eventually you have like a million tabs. It's epic. What's really good about Wikipedia is that you can read about whatever you want and it gives you a lot of general knowledge. So I mean, win-win situation am I right? If you got one more like general memorization tip, look at my YouTube video because that's how I study for the biology olympiad with a super memorization base. So check that out. Just to recap one thing from that video, if you want to have a really good flashcard app, Anki is super good because it lets you like memorize a lot of things pretty quickly and the algorithm is really cool. All right, so now supposedly, supposedly you have a lot of knowledge, right? But there's no point having knowledge if you can't apply it, if you can't get any questions right, if everyone else out buzzes you. So the next thing you gotta work on is buzzer speed. Buzzer speed? The way you get better buzzer speed is by doing practice questions. This is where the practice questions come in. But first you need the knowledge, okay? There's no point buzzing and then not knowing the answer. Like. There's no point doing that, okay? There's no point buzzing and not knowing the answer. So first knowledge. But after you have your knowledge down, after you have a good background, then you can actually get start practicing your buzzing skills. Now that's just doing practice questions with your team, or there's another resource called Protobol. Protobol is pretty epic, let me show you. 
Alrighty, so this is Protoball, and today we're gonna be doing some science on Protoball because, like, who wants to do literature or history, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so you go to a room, and then, what the heck, this guy's good. Nope, <laughs> never mind. Got it wrong. What a troll. Alright, so basically what you gotta do is you gotta click space when you know the ant. Okay, that guy got it. We're, we're gonna get one, okay? Holy. Oh, this is like sign, right? Wait, shoot, I don't know whether it's sign or cosine. Sign. Bruh, it's cool, son. Never mind, it's tangent. Okay, I'm just bad. That's that's the main takeaway from this video. Okay, okay, we're gonna get this. Oh, bruh, you got it good. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Probably triangle. Let's go, we got one. Oh yeah, that was amazing. Let's go. Okay, you get the idea, right? You get the idea. That's protocol for you. Pretty fun. You probably don't want to do it in a public room. You can make your own private room just by clicking a new room over here. Make your own private room and you could do whatever you want. They have like a thousand billion questions. So if you want to learn a lot of new science concepts, just go over here, test your butter skills, get your friends to play. It's super fun. All right, hopefully this was useful. Hope you guys learned something new about butter competence and hopefully you guys are encouraged to do them on your own because it's super fun. All right, that's all I got to say. As always, if you enjoyed the video, Leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.